All right, guys, welcome back to the Minecraft server with Church Mag. And back there, you'll see is our uh, little amusement park area. I am a little bit behind, so I don't have a name to put up on there. I'm just going to leave it for now. I actually, record these two, three weeks in advance of posting them. Ooh, you'll see there that in a second. Um, but I don't have this, so I'm just waiting for things to kind of catch up with you guys. So if you have any ideas, please let me know. Um, but I'm probably two weeks out before I actually get to put a name up there. But if we come over here, this is our amusement park entrance. Yes, I finally have the entrance. I had a whole weekend to kind of play around over here. And look at this place. I love it. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff. There's something here missing that we'll try to tackle this episode. We have an entrance over there and tickets over here. So I'll show you this real quick. Um, oh, before I do that, so I used to, when I see this amusement park, um, with all the snow and all the spruce, I think this is the perfect, like, ski resort. I mean, there's no mountains, so we're not going skiing down that, but if you have a roller coaster, we can certainly make up for it. But this is, like, the perfect ski resort kind of layout, so let's have a ski resort building, and I used to, if you don't know, I used to live in Colorado. So living in Colorado, I've been to a couple ski resorts myself. And this is what they look like. This is like the perfect design. I just realized I need some more torches out here. Let's do that and that. Just some mobs don't spawn too close. I do need to put, I'm thinking about putting, oops, don't want to do that. All light sources melt snow and ice except for the new pickles the sea pickles that we can get so i want to try to incorporate those into the design somehow i'm not sure yet it's going to be really complicated but um this is kind of when i did youth ministry with the air force academy we would go skiing every single year with all the youth and this is what the building looked like that we went skiing at. Obviously there was mountains and we went skiing down them in the Rocky Mountains, but they had an area down below where you come in, you have a whole bunch of lockers. So we got free lockers over here to put your stuff in. Um, you keep your warm clothes in here when you're done skiing, you're cold and wet. You just come over here, grab them and change into. Um, we got a place to buy the stuff so you can get a day pass or a season pass. So people that want to on the um, server, I want to expect that they're honest and they can come and play all the games if they want. But they got to get a season pass or a day pass. Got people that had been eating while they were over here. So they got their food. Um, and if we go upstairs, this is a little bit more formal area. A little bit more of a hanging out and we got the couch to outlook all the stuff over there we've got individual tables with a little bit better meals fish steak and bread we've got place by the fireplace look at that i love that yes then we can go outside to the balcony real quick and look out see everything all the games will be over there or we can go into this one and can see inside there or come downstairs so that's the place i really love this i really love how it's looking oops probably should put more of those down that the torches over here are kind of difficult because you got to put them up way high it's fine cool so this is where we're at this is where the trail stops i still got to go all around here and we definitely will. Um, it'll just take some time. Got to get to it. Yeah. So I think today's episode, like I said, we were missing some things. We need a place for people to pay if they're doing a daily. Um, oh, let's not do that. If they're doing a daily um, pass, then they can put it over here. If they're doing a um, seasonal pass, then they maybe pay here or at least scan it, um, and I'm not sure how we'll do that. I kind of have to think of a payment system here. Oh, and there's this bonfire here. They had bonfires all over the place in Colorado, which is kind of scary because they have trees all over the place too. But the other thing we're missing is also we need a villager. We can come over here and we can do a little sleepy sleep. Um, 
but I want to have a villager back here to kind of be like the, hey, I will uh, take your ticket money and whatever. And then we can just kind of lock them in there. Um, we'll obviously have to change that out because they won't, we don't want them to escape. But we have this here so that no mobs can jump up in there. We have this down here so no, bo no uh, little guys, the short ones, the baby zombies can get in. They can't just jump over. Obviously, it's not preventative of a uh, archer coming in and killing them, so we always have to make sure we leave the door shut. But that's just kind of a responsibility thing at that point. So, we need to go get a villager, which we're going to go this way. And we'll, I think we'll do this on the live stream, but I wanted to show you the place because we've been doing some major upgrades. And we're in the midst right now. It's actually not done, so I can't grab them right this second. You don't want to see me sit here and not do anything for a really long time. But we have a trading post that's getting built right this second. Ooh, hello, Mr. Zombie. Boom, boom. So if we come over here, I don't know how the layout's going to be, how you get in. I don't know if this is like the entrance. I can't imagine it is. So I'll have to figure out where the entrance is. This is our building for the nano farm. We have to have a server specific one. Oh, <laughs> hello. Um, and this, I'm not building this. This is two and five. That's two and five over there. He is the one building this monstrosity of a machine. I'm just gonna go up here. So because I've been helping him out with things, he is giving me He's giving me a little bit of an inside deal of villager trading, but he's basically doing like get five diamonds, get you into the building for as long as you can. And when you're done, you're done and you got to pay again to get back in. But he's going to let me have access to him. Um, the village trade machines over there are iron farms over there. Um, yeah, so I need to get, let's see. I need to get a villager from over there, so I need to AFK. I need to figure out how to put a halt so they don't go downstairs. And then on the live stream, I think I'm going to have them uh, try to get the villager over to the house. So let me really quick take care of that, and then we'll get the final touches put on our entrance into the, the entrance to the amusement park. So give me one second. So we're going to talk a little bit about something called Biblical Hermeneutics. I know we said we would be back with actual villagers, but I wanted to show you a quick time lapse of what's going on. Plus, you get to see my stupid face on the camera. So Biblical Hermeneutics is this concept within theology of are we reading the Bible correctly? Because obviously today with our internet and mobile phones and airplanes and increased connection with the world and simplification with medicine and food production all the stuff that's happening is nothing like what life was like when jesus was born and raised as well as even before that in the old testament and so can we take what was applied to jesus's life to before to afterwards and apply it to our life and if we can then how can we do it right and biblical hermit nukes would say yes we can do that and we can do it really well we just have to be really careful about how we do this. One of the big things with hermeneutics says you can't just pick and choose what you want. You can't say, okay, I believe that we should love one another and then ignore everything that happens in the Old Testament. At the same time, we can't say everybody's sinners and we hate them all and you're all going to go to hell. Except Jesus also taught that we need to love our neighbor. And so this whole idea of having context for how we look at the Bible is really, really important. And sometimes we look at the Bible and say, you know what, this is historical. And other times we would say this is very poetic in how we understand what the Bible is saying. And we can't just jump into this and say, I understand everything that's happening because I spent 10 seconds reading the Bible. Instead, we can look at it and say, you know what? This takes deeper investigation and in understanding how this applies to my life and really trying to be able to understand what the author meant by writing this so that I can then appropriately apply it to myself. And I really do believe that everything written in the Bible can apply to us, but it needs to be understood a little bit deeper and a little bit better 
than the 10 seconds we may put into it with our morning devotional. Now, I would highly encourage if this is something that's completely new to you to go seek out a pastor, maybe a pastor that is at your church, but if you feel comfortable with the um, church members that may be at your church, they don't necessarily do this well, then go talk to some people that go to school for this. This is actually a class that you would learn in Bible class. So hopefully this opens your eyes to understanding the Bible a little bit more. All right, hopefully that was educational for some of you guys. If you have any questions about biblical hermeneutics, it's actually a really typical, uh, tricky subject. I certainly don't have all the answers, and I come from a, a specific faith background that pl- applies this in a very uni- not unique way. That's a terrible way of saying it. Um, applies in a very intentional way um, that maybe some people would not do. So if you have questions about it, don't hesitate to ask. So we uh, took the tracks out. There's still a line here, unfortunately. I might have to come back in through here and take out or uh, put in some of the snow. Uh, but if we come in here and take a look, we got Mr. Uh, I named him 2 and 5 um, after our friend 2 and 5 that actually is on the server. Helped. Uh, it's actually his um, village spawner and village trade area that we have for this. So he is a farmer, which is great because we need a village uh, trader. And so I'm going to use this to uh, as much as I can. I love it. So we got the day passes. I do need to rename them because they're currently daily passes. Obviously, that's different. But anyways, we are going to leave you two and five. We will see you later. I will say I was talking, I think about the idea of doing a special entrance here into the park. I feel like it would be kind of a waste if I spoil some of the fun things that I have planned to make just on the entrance into the gate area. So for now, I think it's going to just be, hey, you got the pass. I'm going to keep the honor system. If you got it, come on in. And then they head out to the, the different attractions that they have for themselves. I will also say this stuff I am going to be changing um, let me show you, I didn't realize with the new updates that they have an update for compact ice. So right now you can tell, that you can see through it, it's actually a little bit distracting. So if we go, we're going to go all the way over to 2 and 5's area of the base on this island and see what he has. You'll notice this is the compact ice. It's a little bit faster, not like a ton faster, but a little bit faster. And you can't see through it. It's noticeably different there. Um, but I actually like it and the, um, it doesn't melt whenever you put a heat source next to it, which is really, really good because I didn't want to do the sea pickles if I didn't have to. Secondly, uh, this thing is now operational. You got to see it pre-construction and we're several days past that now. The guy, two and five, you are amazing with your builds. This is awesome. So you can kind of come in here to see how it works. I'm going to cheat. He knows I cheat with this. That's okay. Um, there's one more place that we need to um, trade. And my job is to help him, since I'm allowed to come in here whenever I need to, to help him restock all this stuff. And basically, if you want to get access to this place, you just need to give five diamonds every single time you come. Um, you throw it in the box, and I think it's actually that box. Um, you throw five diamonds in the box, and you get unlimited access to this for one trip. So if you only brought a little bit of supplies, sorry dude, you're going to have to pay another five diamonds. Um, but they, we supply all the stuff. Carrots, potatoes, melons, all the things. And you get access to this, and we'll circle, cycle them out whenever they're lame. Um, I think that we have leather workers, but if we get green coats or if we get butchers... I think we've cycled everybody else out. Obviously, we need to have a ton of librarians. We only have duplicates of the leather workers um, because we want to see what the secondary trades are. So, yeah, this is the place. This is looking so nice. And I would show you cycling them, but we don't have any more villagers bred. So we need to take care of that. Anyways, I'm going to uh, call it an episode at this point. Um, I kind of hit a pretty intense topic on hermeneutics. I would actually love for this to be kind of a conversation that goes beyond this episode. 
Um, understanding the Bible is really, really important. Um, I think that we need to have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, however you refer to him, as um, our interpreter for this, but I think also our dedication to the Bible, to our understanding of what it means for being a follower of Christ, also has to play into that. And so I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. I know that this is actually kind of a tricky subject for a lot of pastors. Um, some because they just don't take the time to do it because they want to uh, take care of the people that attend their church. And some want to be able to um, do more important, they would say more important things like craft a good message around the Bible verses they have or simply come up with something that inspires people to come into the church. I don't think it's necessarily um, bad arguments in general because it needs to be arguments to be had, but I think that sometimes people don't necessarily have good convictions with their arguments. So anyways, I, I say all that just to simply say if you want to talk about it more, I would love to talk about it. So I will catch you guys next time. See ya. Bye.